All right, Latin 2, finally up to part three of this conversation, and I think you'll see why I wanted to break it up into like three videos, because uh, while it's not a complex topic by any means, uh, if I had done all of these in one video, the video would have been massively long, uh, and also I would have run out of board space and any of the furniture that I sometimes write on, so it just wouldn't have worked. Um, because uh, today, uh, I need to make sure that you also know about comparative and superlative adverbs. That's right, um, because when you are describing something, right, you might be describing a, a noun, a person or a thing, uh, in which case you use an adjective, but you might also be describing the activity, the verb, in which case you need an adverb, and either one of them can be comparative or superlative. It doesn't matter which part of speech it is, if you're describing, you can compare with that descriptor. All right, <clears throat> now I am going to combine comparatives and superlatives adverbs for a couple of reasons. One is we already know the basics of how these work, and two, there's not declension tables, right? Adverbs don't decline. They don't conjugate. Um, in fact, they don't change at all unless you're making them comparative and superlative. Otherwise, they actually don't change at all, which is why we don't parse them. They don't have person, they don't have case, they don't have number, or any of that business, all right? Now, that's it. There's not nothing to know about it, right? So here, I'll, I'll stand here. There we go. So you can see I've got some adjectives, right? Now, some adverbs are not derived from adjectives. Some adverbs are totally their own thing. Um, and I'm not going to deal with those here, although um, if you want to like look up more information about this, um, you can see it in your textbook, all right? It's in chapter 35. Um, if you're a stranger and you don't know what book I'm talking about, it's Eke Romani. If you don't have Eke Romani, I don't know, look at whatever book you have, Google. Um, but if you're one of my kids, or if you have access to Eki Romani, there's elaborations on this stuff in, in chapter 35, but I'm just going to get you through the basics. So here are some adjectives, all right? I've got a couple of uh, first and second declension adjectives, a couple of fourth declension adjectives, and those adjectives can also be adverbs, all right? And there are some conventions about how you turn an adjective into an adverb, Again, I'm not going to elaborate that on, on that right now. You can look that up on your own, or you can ask me questions about it later if you want to have that discussion. But these are just some basic adverb forms that are just the adverbial forms of adjectives that you've already seen, right? So, you know, as opposed to uh, something being long or tall, you can describe it as longe, which is usually contextually like means like far away. Longly. You wouldn't really say that, but, you know, you would talk about something like distantly which is often how it's used. Or, you know, where something can be beautiful, it can be done beautifully. Whereas, you know, somebody or something might be strong or brave, something could be done bravely, right? Um, something that is easy, you could also say things are done easily. But now if you want to make them comparative, then you would say something was more, dis something was done more distantly, or more beautifully, more bravely, more easily. And yes, you're always going to use more. We're not going to say easier. Now, here's the thing. When you make an adverb comparative, it's actually real, real simple. If you think back to the comparative adjective, the adverb looks exactly like the neuter form of that adjective. So you're just using I-U-S, and it doesn't matter which word you're talking about. You use the stem and then I-U-S. That's it. It doesn't change. It can be a little tricky because it does look like the neuter. So it's possible to have some confusion in a sentence if you're like, oh, I don't know if this is a neuter adjective or an adverb. But honestly, it's never been a problem for me. And I'm not saying that because I'm a Latin teacher and I've been doing this for a long time. I'm saying I've never had a sentence where I couldn't tell and it was a problem. Usually you can tell. Usually the context is clear enough. So um, if you want to say something was you know done more distantly, you would say long use. Something done more beautifully, pulcurious, etc. So the process is the same as it was for an adjective. You take the stem, uh, the only difference here is you add I-U-S and it never changes. And actually the process is the same if it's a superlative. If you want to say something was done most distantly or most beautifully or most bravely or most easily, um, you just do whatever you would have done for the adjective except it's going to end in E instead of some form of usa or um. That's literally it. There's, there's nothing else to know about it. Um, so, and, and that even applies if it's one of those adjectives that had a double R or a double L instead of the esim. Well, it's still going to be that way, just with an E at the end instead of an usa or an um, or some other case. 
So yeah, that's that's as simple as this. So the actual forms of these are not that hard to figure out. If you've already figured out the adjective, then it's just a, a tiny little tweak to figure out the adverb, all right? And if you want to see some instances of these being used, I, I have a few example sentences, as I always do. Um, so this one says, uh, Luke jumps more heavily than Leia, all right? <clears throat> Again, you know, obviously I'm talking about the cats here. And uh, if any of you have cats, you'll know sometimes the cats jump on you. And sometimes they exert an amazing amount of force for how tiny their little bodies are. They, they leap off of you or onto you as if their feet are made of bowling balls. But like tiny, tiny little bowling balls that are to focus all of, all of that weight into just a little spot. It's, it's impressive. But yeah, so here I am saying that, you know, Luke jumps and the way he jumps is heavily, but specifically more heavily than Leia. And apart from this being an adverb instead of an adjective, it's just like my other comparative sentences. I even have qualm, meaning van, and uh, in my comparison to Leia, same as if this had been an adjective. There, there's really no difference here, right? Um, or, you know, if you need to see another comparative example, here we have Leia runs more quickly than Luke. Oh, I did add something here that I didn't talk about in another video. So I have Leia runs more quickly, my comparative adverb, than Luke. You'll notice I, I instead of using a qualm here, I use the ablative of comparison, which I talked about in the other video. What I didn't talk about in the other video was this, molto, which is also ablative. Specifically, this is a thing called the ablative of degree of difference. Um, I know, I just added another ablative. This actually could happen with um, comparative uh, adjectives as well. I just didn't talk about it in that video. I figured one new ablative in that video was enough. Well, we do have this other new ablative. Don't worry about it too much. Um, it's either going to be by a lot or by a little. I don't think I've ever seen one of these that was not by a lot or by a little. So it's going to be multo or paolo. Uh, it's just telling you how much faster Leia is than Luke. She runs much more quickly. It's a degree of difference. If you need to see some uh, examples of superlatives, I've got some here. So this says, you know, in my house, the cats, wait, what did I put? Sorry, I have to think about this. Uh, in my house, the cats walk most elegantly, right? <clears throat> and that is usually true. I mean, they do doofy things sometimes, but um, that is mostly true, right? Cats kind of have this very elegant style of walking, certainly more so than me or my wife. Not a slam on me or my wife, just cats walk very, very elegantly. And that is to say here that, you know, I could say they, they walk most elegantly, or I could say they walk very elegantly. Now, if I'm saying in my house, I think the context makes more sense to say they walk most elegantly, because then there's kind of this inherent comparison to anybody else who might be in my house. So I would translate this one as most elegantly, but don't forget that you can also translate these by degrees instead of absolutely being superlative. Like uh, in this one, uh, and in this one it says, uh, my cat's poop uh, makes my house uh, smelly uh, in a very ugly way. I could technically say in a most ugly way, but you know, I don't think the context here makes sense to say most as much as just very. It makes my house smelly in a very ugly way, which is why you have to clean that cat box every day, all right? Don't skip a day, you're gonna regret it. It's gonna smell, and then when people come over, they're gonna say, you got a smelly house. Now, I know it's virus time, so people aren't really coming over, but they will one day. That's why you gotta scoop every day. Certainly, either me or my wife doesn't. If I'm being honest, it's usually her. But I try to, you know, I try to do my part. <laughs> and, uh, and, and when one of us doesn't, whew, it becomes obvious real fast. So make sure you're scooping your cat box. Also make sure you know how to spell your comparatives and superlatives. It has been a, a long week already and it's only Thursday. I have a lot to do, so I'm gonna go get that stuff done. I will see you later, but as always, hit me up with questions if you have them. Bye everybody.